please receive and welcome with me. Hallelujah. Oh, she whom we adore and love and honor Hallelujah. and give thanks unto the Almighty for, for the power that resides in the holy elder and evangelist. Please welcome and receive with me the holy Malka elder overseer Salisiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We magnify the most high. It is he in whom we live, in whom we have our being. It is because he reigns. Oh, Father, we glorify you and let it be known this day we love you with all our being and it is but right to worship you, to glorify you, to honor you. And thus we praise you. Your family praises you. The righteous praise you. Come on and praise him with me. Hallelujah. Where would we be if it were not for the Most High? For how he loves us so that he sent his only begotten, beloved son, Yeshua, to redeem us unto him and let us bless him for the son that he sent. Thank you, Father. And thank you for the example in our midst. The one we know as our beloved pastor, who is far more than that. He is the expression of the Most High in the earth before us, sent to gather the elect remnant from the four corners of the earth. We love you, Father, and thank you for sending the prophet, the melech, the malachi, the revealer of the mystery illumined, prophet Eshadar. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, O glory of heaven. We prepare to enter in and we give honor and recognize every minister, every prince, daughter, and son of the Most High. We love you. We love you. Let us praise him for who we are together in one body. Our hearts are at peace as we pray. Lift our, our minds in the Father now. O Holy One, thou reignest supreme above all that is, everything that is seen and unseen. For the worlds were framed by you and none other. Though man only knows of one dimension, we know there are many, and you have made it so. And though we know not, we trust in you. What you have declared in your word is and will be and already exists. Though never seen by the eyes, nor understood by the comprehension of this type of man today. Father, we submit ourselves unto you as you require. Your love you gave abundantly so. And in that, you only ask that we love you in return. So the principle of reciprocity abides. That as you gave unto us freely, 
with generosity, we also, who choose to honor you and worship you, will also love you without condition, without holding back, without returning to anything that is not of you. We are because you live, Father. We live because you allow us to. And in this, the prerequisite to serving you is to submit. And by our submission in humility and in meekness, we gain access to the kingdom you have invited us to partake of and have called us to and have given us the right to abide as citizens within your realm, your glorious kingdom, Father. And in this we pray, Almighty One, continue to bless us as we continue to be blessed by you and please you and fulfill in us the joy that you promise and reward to the doers of your word. Let it so be done. Laka. Let us bless him, magnify him, worship him. Hallelujah. Please take your seats and come with me. Let us come to Philippians, the book of Philippians, chapter 4. In our last coming together, where the Most High allowed me, his handmaiden and servant, to come before his people, our family, we addressed the vital importance of what it means to reign in authority. The authority that is given to every righteous soul by the Most High. This authority abides in each and every one under the governance of the Spirit of the Father. Access to this authority by way of His Spirit allows you and I to remain on a course and a pathway which will not allow us to be submitted to the enemy in defeat. Neither can we suffer anything that the Father does not allow. Even if it looks like defeat at the moment, We are not forsaken, even if it appears and is as though we are cast down. It will be made evident that we were never forsaken and in truth, ultimately, never defeated. Hallelujah. The righteous have keys given by the Father. The righteous also abide without sin. The foundation of living in holiness requires a sin-free life. In order to be righteous, one must be sin-free. And although this is a difficult concept for the carnal Christians, and even those who do not consider themselves to be Christians, but who follow the word, who read the ancient texts, There is yet this double-sided coin of calling oneself righteous while yet conducting themselves in sin. When we went into this word, not only were we addressing the fact that sin is unrighteousness, and this gives access to what the wages of sin are, which is death, and we read it, In the word, and I'll repeat it for you once again as we prepare to enter in. The caution 
unto the people of the Most High who live in righteousness is to not relent the authority given unto you by way of the cares of life, by way of not being watchful and conscious over the things that you partake of, the thoughts of your mind, to gird up your loins, the loins of your mind, that the enemy not sift from you ever so subtly, that the righteous would find themselves stumbling and falling, falling away. We have to be mindful that the enemy is not only subtle in his dealings, he is conniving. He is more intelligent than any genius on earth in all time. The power that he has came from when he was born in the Father, and it didn't go anywhere. Gifts and callings are without repentance and that includes Satan and he has been abiding for thousands of years he knows things more than can ever be uttered in one book he cannot be taken lightly and this is a caution that the authority that the righteous have is not given over to another authority the authorization you can give to someone else. You can let someone else into your home by your authority. Amen? You may also give authority to a familiar spirit to attack you. We went into this, and I briefly remind you. How can you give a familiar spirit or the enemy access into your dwelling, which is your mind and your spirit, is simply by not making sure that you have addressed self and gotten rid of self to the point where you no longer abide, but who you are is who you were called to be and becoming and become manifested sons of the Most High. Manifested sons of the Most High do not have fits. Manifest the sons of the Most High, I guarantee it, will not be throwing a temper tantrum. They will be about their father's business. There is no room for carnality, for self, for the petty things of the cares of life. It will be about the things of the spirit and the things of the kingdom. We must be mindful and careful. These little things that you may not count significant because it's not fornication. You're not lying, you're not cheating, and you're not stealing. But you allow ways to tear at the fabric of your soul. And when the fabric of your soul is torn at little by little, the enemy slips in through the back door or the side door or the little hole you did not see. This is why you must test yourself. Test yourself. Male and female, test yourself. Habits that you have, can you undo it? Things that you like, can you redirect and try to like something else? Or are your habits conquering you is your speech dictating how you think I was asked a question some time ago when you speak another language do you also think your thoughts quietly in that language and the answer is yes you can and in fact many do when you are able to understand another language and it becomes a part of you. The actual culture of the language and the inflection of the language also becomes a part of your thoughts and will conduct your mannerisms. 
And I showed you how we can see it in those who have adapted the ways, the ways of the people who are most despised in the earth. They hate people who have color, in particular those who are called of African descent. But they love their fashion. They love their action. They love their dress. They love, if you would, how they speak. Their new vocabulary becomes theirs. Even so, their head movement, their hand movement, their walking changes. Take a look at those around you who used to be one way and are now another. They have taken on a language that they have learned. You must also take on the language of the kingdom that the kingdom ways dismiss and remove the ways of the world that you partook of and were active in without even realizing it. How often have you heard perhaps someone bring it to your attention that you said something you didn't realize that you said and you had to go back and repeat and reiterate or change? That you moved in a particular way and you did something with your facial expression that conveyed the opposite of what you were saying. What you were saying was something pleasant and nice, but the eyes may have rolled. And the lips got tight. And a little smirk on the face which said, what you're saying is not so. You're contradicting. What you mean is what you're showing. And when it's brought to your attention, you say, no, I didn't. I didn't do that. And you try, those of you who've done it, and you have to recognize if this was you, and it likely has been. If you can first recognize and admit that you have been double-minded in the past, that you showed one thing while you did another, but you justified it and said, no, that's not what I was doing. You misunderstood. You will sound terrible you will sound like you're not a bright person to the person who saw what they saw and knows what they know, but they cannot communicate it in words to tell you exactly what you did. You were duplicitous on two opposite sides of the coin just so you could get your way. And if one side of the coin didn't fit the situation, then you would choose to use the other side of the coin so you would be right no matter which way the conversation goes. Does this sound like anyone you know? Yes, it does. And if you're honest, you will remember that it likely sounds like you in the past. If this was you in the past, how can you guarantee that it will not be you in the future? Because it wasn't blatant as a lie. It wasn't blatant and you stealing something. You using profanity, which is a sin. However, you're not mindful. If you are not mindful, these sneaky ways that you choose to continue to overlook will be the ways that the enemy will come in. The subordinate will undermine the righteous, the saved. The subordinate is none other than evil spirits, familiar spirits, the enemy himself. He is subordinate to the authority that abides in you. And we read this in the scripture. And we went into this in the word. You are not subordinate to the devil. The devil is subordinate not to you. You have no power. He's not subordinate to you. Evil spirits are not subordinate to you. He is subordinate to the highest power that lives in you. And when the spirit of the father lives in you, then that authority reigns in you, governs you, he hears you because of who is abiding in the temple.
It matters not whether you are a man or a woman, a teenage boy or a teenage girl. If his spirit lives in you, you cannot sin. And if his spirit lives in you, then the devils must hear. And the devils, Satan himself, must hear you. Not because of you, but because of you abiding in the authority given to you by the Almighty. Hallelujah. So we came to the understanding, and I reiterate it for those of just coming now, and to bring you back. There is no access to you unless you give it. Anything that happens to you outside of the will of the Father is because you allowed something not to be tight within you. You were only watching one, two, three areas when you had four, five, six, seven, eight, and on to subject, to redirect, and change that you exemplify the fruit of the Spirit all the time. You cannot be one way, but not all the way. Being part is not being a whole. You're not part man and you're not part woman. You can't help it. You are all man and you are all woman. When you are saved, you are invited in by the invitation to be saved all the way, not part way. Are you with me? There is no way that Messiah came to offer you salvation, the gift of salvation, just in part. Take the invitation and rip it in half, and he gives you just portion of it. So you're partly saved. What happens to the rest of you? So the enemy can devour you only in half. He will devour all of you. You must be saved entirely. And we use the analogy of those who are drowning. If you're going to save someone from drowning, you can't save their foot. You can't save their head. You can't save their arm. You must save all of them. This is the same concept, the same precept you have to have when you're filled with his spirit. When you become worthy, after you have appreciated and heard the call, the invitation to be saved, that is monumental for many believe they are saved and yet they are not. But you who know you heard the call and answered with a yes, Father, I am willing. I believe in Yeshua. I believe he is the way to you, Father. I believe in everything he said. This invitation you took hold of and now you are in the door. You have been welcomed in, but you have not received the access yet to the strength you will need to keep the devil away. Familiar spirits away. How do we know? How do we know this power abides in the righteous, filled with his spirit? We can read accounts that tells us this. If we look at Mark and Matthew, there's one particular account. And we may go there. But if we don't, you can read it for yourself. When Yeshia was about and he entered into a place, there were those who were possessed with devils. Did the devils recognize the highest authority that came near and nigh unto them? How do we know? Because the devils cried out and acknowledged Messiah. Then they begged him 
to allow them to go into the swine. They understood what he was coming to do. They recognized the authority. Hallelujah. Did not Yeshua say he would send a comforter for us? And this comforter would guide us and lead us in all truth. And we know this to be the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father. And if Yeshua came to show us how to live, how to abide in the Father, didn't he cast out devils by his authority? And if you're saved and filled, then you now have the same authority to cast out devils. Did he not tell and rebuke the devil to get thee behind me, Satan. If you abide in him and he abides in you, then Satan must conform. He hears the highest power. He was allowed to touch Job. Not because he could only. He had to be given the authority to do so. And the Most High suffered it. Because he knew that Job would not turn against him. So when we go through, while we are going through, if we do not understand, but we know he is, and there is no sin found in you, then know you will come out and glorify the Father. Have the joy in your heart while you press on to the next phase and enter in ascension with the father hallelujah we're going to read philippians come with me there philippians 4 let us read verse 4 of philippians 4 Rejoice in the Most High always, and again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Most High is at hand. This is key. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Father. This is your resolution to subjecting those areas that can be pulled as a loose thread. The flaws in the character that are not sinful but will lead to sin eventually. And for some, so grotesquely, right early. This is the resolution. Even yourself, you must make the request known to be pure of heart, transparent in all that you do. You must be careful for nothing, meaning for everything that the slightest detail you do not ignore. If you're picking up trash, large pieces of trash, and you've been going all day, and you come across one tiny speck of trash, of garbage that does not belong where you are. You're tired, you're hungry, you might even be thirsty, and you've grown weary but everything looks clean. All the heap of garbage is gone, just that little speck. That's okay. You can leave it. No one will really notice. Look at how clean it looks. The mountains of trash are gone. Everything looks shiny and beautiful, just that little speck. Being careful for nothing is catching yourself Stepping back, 
taking a deep breath, I can't leave that. Go back to where it was, even if you went and left the building, got in your car, and it took that long for you to recognize that's not how the kingdom is. That's not how the Father is. That's not how Yeshia is. And definitely we know that's not how the prophet is. I'm turning right back around. This thing is gnawing at me. Someone asks you, what are you doing? I came to get the trash. Well, the trash is gone. Don't you see? It looks beautiful. No, no. It is, but no, there's still trash there. How do you know? I don't see anything. I do. And you go right to where it was, and they say, I didn't even notice. I know, but I did. And you noticed it, and you were going to leave it. And that is what pricks your heart. That is why you're careful for nothing. That nothing is not nothing. The word is telling you that nothing is something. And it will tear at the fabric of your soul. And the enemy will see it. And he will sift at you. He will sift you. And you simply will not allow it. You will not give him the authority to tear away your soul from the kingdom of the most high. You got to fight. We are at war. Be careful for nothing. Oh, glory. I have to say, thank you, Father. When you take on the ways of the Father, you take on his spirit. There is no one and nothing that can lead you astray. You will not perish you will not die. You will not succumb to the enemy. But you will live and prosper. Hallelujah. Woo. Let us come. There's so much we can go into. The word is, is wonderful. Ephesians. Come to Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We know the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we remember that Yeshia said he would send a comforter. And this comforter that he sent in his name would remind us of what we need to remember and would teach us what we need to be taught. But there is order and there's a sovereignty in the kingdom of the Most High. This is not a license to say I don't need to be taught by the written text because I have the spirit. I had one beautiful person share with me over 10 years ago that they have the spirit. They just go out into nature and commune with the Spirit, and the Spirit speaks to them. They don't need a Bible. They don't need a pastor. And then they quote Scripture saying, he sent a comforter. They're suggesting that, well, the Word says, the Spirit will lead and guide us in all truth. So what do I need anyone to teach me for when I have his Spirit? Well, if you really had his spirit, then you would know how the Most High is. He's about order. When he sent the Comforter, he also sent forth his disciples and anointed them as apostles to go forth and teach the word and to teach men things they didn't know because the spirit of the Most High cannot give access to one who is not in position yet. And though you may be righteous, holy, sanctified, there are levels of faith you must come to. There are levels of consciousness you must come to. There are revelations and mysteries that must be unfolded unto you by his voice. 
his prophet in the earth. His true prophets in the earth will still be his expression in the earth to reveal his will. While the saints are filled with his spirit. So the saints filled with the Holy Spirit cannot tell the prophets, cannot tell the apostles, cannot tell the elders, the evangelists, the ministers, I don't have to hear you. I'm filled with his spirit and he will tell me what I need to know. Not so. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded woman is unstable in all her ways. You cannot have part of the word and not all of the word. There is sovereignty in the kingdom of the Most High. You have to be taught. We have to be taught by the Father how to access the authority that we have abiding in us. You're filled with his spirit. The things the Father knows, you don't know. If you don't need to be taught, then how come you don't know what will happen tomorrow exactly? But his spirit is in you and he knows, but you don't have that access. It's not for you. You're not a prophet. It's not for you. You're not an evangelist. It's not for you. What's for you is what's for you. And his spirit will lead and guide you within those parameters of who you are. So let us rightly divide and not be simple-minded and use the word for our own exaltation, shall we? I fear, I fear any man, woman, for them if they choose to think in arrogance. They know more than the Father and his spirit. That is a terrible situation to be in they surely will come to know destruction. You must be careful. I know nothing. What I know is given to me by the kingdom through the Father. What I'm taught, the revelations, the Most High did not tell me. No, he did not. The Spirit of the Father did not tell me what I know today. How I have come, he taught me through his prophet. He taught me through the prophet revealing the mysteries. He taught me through the prophet teaching the fundamentals and the foundation of the word of what it means to serve him in love and obedience with reverence. So brethren, beloved family, I do caution you you have increased in awareness and consciousness. Be mindful that knowledge does puff up. There is so much we don't know. It is but a drop, so to speak, in the ocean, in the word of the Most High. And we are blessed to be able to partake in truth to truly abide where the Father is, to hear from his mind and know that it is from the Father. We are convicted. We can read the scripture. We can see the scripture for the first time like we've never seen it before because the veil is lifted from our eyes by none other than his prophets. So the Holy Spirit is not going to teach you what the prophets do not reveal first. The Holy Spirit will remind you of what was taught unto you. But he will not undo himself, contradict himself. The Father is not double-minded. Neither is he unstable. There is order in the kingdom. So as you ascend, keep the order. 
remain humble and meek and know there is so much more to come to. And being humble and submissive is the key to the access of the power and the full authority that abides in each and every one filled with his spirit. Ooh. Ephesians, if you would, chapter 6. Come to verse 10. Laka, wonderful. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Most High and in the power of His might. You need to soak this in, not just hear it. We are called to be doers of the Word, not just hearers of the word. When you only hear the word, when you need to be a doer of the word, you won't know what to do with that word. And the devil will sift you and take your life if he can, and he can. So ye must be doers of the word, not only hearing the word. So let us read verse 10 and absorb it in your spirit. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Most High, in the power of His might. That means you have to know it. You have to have faith. You can't talk those words without body. When you speak with conviction and passion, and you truly like something, you can feel it from your spirit. When you truly despise a thing, you can feel it where it can make your body physiologically respond where you may actually tremble and the hormones get released and adrenaline starts rushing and sweat starts pouring because you really feel it. You need to feel this. That you know that you must be strong in the most high. And in the power of his might. Woo! Woo! How do we do this? Here is another resolution within the resolution verse 11 the second verse we're reading put on the whole armor of the most high that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil what does that mean are you allowing yourself to feel within your spirit and grasp hold what this is saying to you. This is a scripture we are familiar with. Songs are written about this scripture. But look at it. Read it with your mind. Absorb it into the pores of your body and your soul. Put on the whole armor of the Most High that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is the answer. You got to put on. You must put on the armor of the Father. What is the armor of the Father? First, you have to be saved. Then you have to be filled. And when you're filled, you have to walk in all the fruits of the Spirit of the Father. Not just one fruit, all fruit, all conveyance, all expressions. You must do it all. You want the Father to do all and be all for you. Or you want him only to be once a week for you, sometimes for you, or all the time for you. Then you must be all the time in time, every moment of the day, with the complete 
armor of the Father in order to not allow the wiles, the attack, the sifting of your fabric, O ye righteous, of the devil to subdue you. This is what you must do. But if you don't feel like it, then you won't. And if you don't feel like it today, and you don't, does the enemy know it? And he's just waiting for you to show that self. Because it's coming. Because you have little buttons to push. And it's just a matter of time before you put yourself in the circumstance, the environment, a situation with family or friends that you just can't bear it. And self just comes oozing out like pus. And he is smelling it like a dog, like a buzzard to the kill, waiting to sift you, to steal from you, to kill you. Because today, something just got under your skin. Something just got into your flesh, just bothered you so you cannot maintain. But you won't cuss. You won't sin with profanity, but you won't lie. You just become so inflamed, you lose consciousness. And you act unseemly. And you don't show patience and long suffering unto those who need it. And you cause them to question, is there really a creator? You cause them to wonder, what is the point of going to church if this is what it means? I thought he was about the word. I thought she lived right. This doesn't look like how you live when you abide by the kingdom. They sound no different than the gangs on the street. There is a separation between the world and the righteous, the called and those who are not called. Everyone is invited to salvation, but not everyone is called to be the elect remnant. And when they hear that call and they refuse it, how many more times will the Father keep calling until they become no longer called on? There are those who will not be called on anymore. They already know, and they choose to refuse. It was in their face year in and year out, and they chose to refuse. They're not being called anymore. They know better. Those who don't know are getting the knock, getting the call. Someone is coming to them, and they say, yes, I know. I know, but I'm not ready yet. I'm coming. I just need to take care of some things first, get this out of their system first, because when it comes to serving, they know things have to be right. So they do know. But so do the devils. The devils believe, fear, and tremble. The difference is the devils are devils and they're not changing. People can change. And they can transform by the renewing of their mind and become a new creature in Christ Hamashiach, or they become sons of Hasetan, and they will change and have gnashing of teeth when they burn in damnation forever. Devils will be devils, and they won't change. People, it is the souls of men and women that the devil wants to change, that he wants to keep from the kingdom, keep from the Father. He wants to revert the righteous back unto the world. He wants their soul. And more than that, he wants their body. He wants your body. So he can do whatever he wants. Use your body to actually cause other bodies to follow what you do like cattle. And you know that this is so. One person starts and the next starts and the next thing you know you have a generation of people dyeing their hair some ridiculous color, speaking in some ridiculous way, conducting themselves so whorish it's beyond the whoredom of the last decade 
it is beyond, beyond evil, and yet more evil is coming worse than the evil we see today. You have to know the enemy wants your soul and he wants to use your bodies to lead other cattle into the fire. He's going to use you. Before he throws you away, he will wear you out and let you bring casualties, collateral damage you will bring because of your sin. You won't even know if you affected a little child, a grown man, or another woman. But you would have made an impression so that it tore at their fabric that just when they were about to say, I want more, you did something, and you were being watched. And that's something you said, that's something you did, how you behaved, just took them out from the doorway they were about to knock on that door and enter into. You won't even know who you affected and how many you affected, but you will know some, those who followed you in folly. You're here today, but where are all of your friends that were with you before you gave over to the Father? They followed you when you did what they did. They changed their habits to do what you were doing. Or you changed your habits to do what they were doing. You woke up and came, but they wouldn't hear you and come with you. Only a minute few have brought family or a loved one with them into the kingdom. The damage you have done. They will not even hear you. The majority will not even hear you. Do what you can to redeem what you can. Each and every single person here, before you were saved, you added collateral damage. And the authority you have abiding in you today authorizes you by the strength of the highest power to go out and bring in and save those who will hear. And if you can, just by living day in and day out, maybe those who knew what you were, how you were, will begin to believe who you really are and want that peace you now have. But it's a hard thing. It is so hard for the world to give up the world until they do. Then it is a freedom. It is a joy. It is a weight that is lifted that it's almost as if you cannot explain it until they experience it for themselves. And that's why how you live, how you move in his being will be your witness. Do not expect someone to change tomorrow. They have to see how you are, maybe for a decade before they forget the man you were. And you can't hold it to them by saying things like, they keep bringing up my past. They treat me, they respond a certain way to me. Yes, they do, because it's what you were. It's how you were. You have to prove to them you have been transformed. They've trusted you before, and you broke it. Why should they trust you now? You have to live it so they can say, you know, I haven't seen that. You know, they don't talk this way. You know, they're just something really different. They're the same person, but with a glow. They're the same person I remember, but without the filth, without the clutter, without the confusion, without the schism, without the rage. 
without all the emotional spasms. It's as if they're searching, searching. They're polished. They're refined. They're still the same person, but even better than what I knew of them. I want to know, how did they get this done? Because I know there's something more to me. You knew it back then too, and some of you even recently, you knew how your speech was, was not right. You knew when you caused harm to others with your mouth, you knew it was not right, but you justified it. Well, they did this to me, so petty, petty simpleton. Petty, petty simpleton. That's what you were. Tit for tat. We don't have time for that. And I did not mean anything less. It is simple in a negative way to be so petty-minded, to have to be right. Listen to this. If this is you, you're not the only one who's ever done something like this. If you have the right of way driving on the street, and you come to an intersection, and your light is green, and the intersection, the crossing lane, obviously must have a red light, and you see them coming, and they don't slow down their speed, and you know they are going to cross the intersection full speed, and you continue to make way instead of stopping. Does it sound, even sound, to say, well, I had the right of way. It was my turn. I had the green light, and if they hit me, it would have been their fault. How does that sound to you? Retarded, right? But you've done that. You've done that with other things. She said this to me. He said that to me. I want to be with her because I feel she's the one. So because you feel she's the one, you fornicate. And that's why you justified what you did because you just knew that she was the one. If she was the one, then why didn't you do it the right way? if she truly was the one. If he really is the one, then why are you conducting yourself out of order? Speaking the way you're speaking. You're not married, then why are you talking the way you're talking? If he's really the one, then you will wait for things to be right. And he won't allow you to contaminate yourself with filth because you're the one then be the one. What's taking so long? Don't justify yourselves. So if this is retarded to you, don't point any fingers. Just look at the many times you have done things that looked retarded. So what would this person say to the Most High? Righteous, saved, filled with the Spirit of the Father, but has a flaw in their character. A circumstance that we went into in the last session, which we came together and I was before you. Circumstances, environments that tear at the fabric of the soul. The circumstance was driving to get from one place to another, rushing, have to be somewhere. Someone violating what was their right to do. They had an emotional moment of anger. Knocking on the door of rage, so sensitive. That how dare someone take their right to drive at that moment in time so they could go to the father after they were killed and say, well, it wasn't my fault. They had the red light. I had the right of way. You would go to the father and justify yourself knowing that you could have stopped but you didn't because you had to be right. So you can be right in a car wreck, right with a crippled body, and right dead. You would have disobeyed the spirit of the Most High. Right in that moment because the circumstance you have not addressed with self. You did not subject those flaws in your character that one day, unsuspecting, you end up crossing an intersection 
you are an emotional spasm, you get upset, and you keep going rather than hearing the highest power speak to you through his spirit to halt, stop. You quench the spirit of the Father and say, no, I have the right. This is my turn to go. Then you realize, ooh, I did know to stop. Oh, my goodness. He tried, and I wouldn't hear. You tell me, is that disobedience? Should the father wink at this? So when Uzzah touched the ark, who knew the laws of the Most High, knew the order of the priests, he knew there are things you cannot do with holy vessels. And the instructions and the mandate was very clear. No one is to touch the ark. But he was holy and he was a priest. Did he touch it? But why did he touch it? Because something happened. A circumstance occurred. And in that moment, he didn't realize it. He didn't mean it. But he raised himself up above the commandment of the Father to do what the Father forbid. He didn't allow the Father to have his way. The ark may not have fallen to the ground. It may have levitated, and he stole that from the father. Whatever it was, did not the father know that the ark would fall? He knew it. How do we know? Because he is the father. Omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing. And he warned. This is valuable. You need to listen very, very closely. Very closely. When the Spirit of the Father speaks to you, when you receive an instruction from the Father, you should ask, what do I do now? This is what I should do, and this is what I should not do. If you were Uzzah, now that you know what Uzzah did not know, you could ask, the Father said, don't touch the ark. What should I do now? Don't touch the ark. But what if something happens? Don't touch the ark. Rehearse within himself. How do I not touch the ark? By not touching the ark. No matter what happens. Why would the father tell me not to touch the ark? Are you coming with me now? Why would the father tell you not to touch the holy vessel? How can you touch it? It's untouchable. Why would you say for me not to touch the ark? I can't. We have special instruments to avoid touching the ark. That doesn't seem like it makes sense. If something changes, I need to be aware. Stay on alert. If the father's telling me not to touch the ark, that means I might be in position or someone might be in position I don't know what exactly, but something might be able to occur where the ark could get touched, and I need to watch for that. He just told me something's about to happen. Do not touch the ark means no one touches the ark. Father, we know no one touches the ark. Make sure you breathe in the next 10 minutes. Make sure you breathe in the next 10 minutes. Why would I tell you that? You're already breathing. Consciousness. Think. Something can change in 10 minutes where you feel like you shouldn't breathe. But I just told you, now you're on alert. Listen, there will be those who will hold their breath. This is hypothetical. There will be those who will hold their breath and say, I can't breathe, and stop breathing, and won't take a breath. While those who are conscious, no matter what it is, no matter how it smells, or doesn't smell, but looks ominous, you will remember that you were told, don't stop breathing in the next 10 minutes. So now a mist of red haze comes within the 10 minutes. 
Do you breathe or do you hold your nose and close your mouth? Nearly pass out because you can't breathe. In fact, even pass out because you're not breathing this. It must be poison. Or do you breathe? That's what you think. Only because you've been taught to watch and to listen. You're learning to hear and not quench the spirit of the Father. If this precious soul who was righteous and was filled with the spirit of the Most High was warned, there's still no guarantee that they would not have allowed their character flaw, which is emotions of anger, to overtake them that they still would not have been emotional and continued instead of hearing the spirit in her or him, putting on the brakes and letting the car pass to ensure that she stayed or he stayed within the hedge, being vigilant to do all we can to tarry. There's still no guarantee unless you use effort and force to rehearse the word and to listen to what you don't truly hear at first. We must be doers of the word, not hearers only. If you only hear, but you don't do, then you will not apply. So here comes the mist. Now you're in a position to be doers because you heard it, you applied it, that you will do it. And you will do it because you are absorbing and rehearsing and preparing for what you don't know will come. But you stay heightened. You stay ready. And you stay sensitive to the spirit of the Father in you that you say, wait a minute. Stop. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I'm so, thank you, Father, for allowing me to hear this. I was so preoccupied, so busy with this, with that, with that. I almost missed it. I almost quenched you, Father. Oh, forgive me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, but I just want to say forgive me because I almost did. You must be so humble that you want to say forgive me that I almost didn't hear you. But I heard you. What was that? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm backing up. I'm waiting. I'm breathing. No matter what I see, I'm breathing. I'm maintaining. The ark is falling. I'm not touching it. Most I said, don't touch it. I'm so grateful, Father, that you reminded me not to touch the ark. And I didn't make haste out of emotions, out of arrogance to presume that you didn't know the ark would fall and that I would have to be your hero and rescue the ark. The audacity of self. I almost, but I didn't. But I ask your forgiveness that the thought even entered my mind to move my body to touch. But I withdrew in time not to. I would have been dead, Father. <sighs> this is serious. This is heavy. But because you live today and you don't even recognize the mercy that he extended to you time and time again when you would not hear, you're not that careful, but you must be that careful. We read it for nothing, for nothing. Thing. That means if it looks like nothing, be careful of it. It's not nothing. It will sift at you. Ultimately, you will give over authorization to familiar spirits, to the devil, to come in and have access to your mind, your soul, and your body to steal from you, to kill you, to destroy everything that was covenanted to you by the Father. You would have done that, not the Almighty, not the Almighty. You can blame the devil if you want to, but it's you who gets the blame because you authorized him to come in 
When he didn't have the authorization, you gave him the authority to rule and dominate you. You did it. We must read. We must. In verse 11 of Ephesians chapter 6. I don't know about you. This is blessing me. It is so heavy. There is no one that the Father has respect a person for. No one. His own son. The word as flesh had to follow his laws. He had to subject himself and allow himself to go through everything he went through. He had to. He had no choice. We have to be of the same mind. If this mind be in you, understand, you take on the mind of Yeshaya, then there is no way you will violate in any shape or form. Every character flaw will be addressed and be removed or redirected. If you're stubborn, then be stubborn. But don't be stubborn as unto witchcraft. Be stubborn to resist the devil. Rightly divide the word of truth. You're not a witch if you resist the enemy. You're a witch and you do as witchcraft when you're stubborn against the father and he hates it and then he will hate you. And anything and anyone he hates, he destroys and he will make an example of either in their day while they can walk and see the example they are to others as a warning or they will be an example in their death knowing they had a choice to change and would not change such petty things would not change did you lie today did you steal today did you slip into fornication today and it was an accident did you do anything that was a sin against the most high in the last 15 minutes then how is it that you cannot live without sin for the next 15 minutes and the next hour what circumstance what environment what situation will you walk into that you will be so unstable like jello, so weak and frail that someone could say something to you and you just wobble like two left feet, can't even walk. You're so frail in your mind, you can't even maintain going from one place to the next and you want to travel the world. Do you know what it means to travel the world? You can't even go from neighborhood to neighborhood without having a fit. You can't even get on the computer without having a fit. You are called. You are. You're going to be used by the Father to teach his word. So everyone in the kingdom and in glory, everyone is having a fit and arguing and cussing and dressing like how the enemy designed the world to be. He's under their influence. If you're not a son of the father, then your father is the devil. So the ways of the devil are in glory because you're called. Does that even make sense? It makes sense that there would be a tremendous distinction between what's in glory and what's in the world. Purity, 
transparency, cleanliness, holiness, kingdom speech, things about the realm that do not concern this world and the ways of it. We live in this world, but we are not of it. If we're not of it, then how is it going to be in glory with the way you still are? Hallelujah. For those of you who are still engaging in your mind and with your body, and you're familiar with the activities of the world, they have rules and regulations. You don't get into the nightclub unless you are dressed the way they want you to be. And if you don't fit their clique, they just won't let you in. You can dress the part, but if you don't talk, if you're not their kindred, they will just say no. No explanation, just no. You can offer money all you want, they will say no. You will tarnish their reputation. They don't want you there. You have to conform. And this is the world demanding conformity. But the Most High can accept any kind of garbage that you want to throw at him because he is all-knowing and all-understanding, and he knows your heart. Well, use that. The university knows your heart, too, and won't let you in. The health spa knows your heart, too, and won't let you in unless you're dressed right. The restaurant will not let you in barefoot and shirtless because you have a good heart. You have to conform, and it is beyond arrogant. It is beyond so many words that I could use to think that the Father gets the filth. Filth you don't even see as filth. That's grievous and it should be sorrowful to all of us that so many are filthy in their ways and don't even know it. They are double-minded and don't even know it. They want you to do, but they don't want to do. You have a friend like that? They want you to always do for them, but they don't realize they've never really done for you? You drive them everywhere, but they never offer to help you in your driving or drive you or help you in another way. Always taking, never giving, it feels like. So the father must always just take it. He has given everything. He's given us life and access. He gave an invitation, whether you take it or not is your choice, but he is so benevolent that he allowed you to be born, that you could come to know him. He extends the invitation of salvation to us, that you could come in and enter into the kingdom and abide there, but only with one condition. You must bear his spirit, all of his spirit. You must abide as he is. You must become image and likeness. You must reflect the word that's what? Engrafted in you, permeates through your soul to your body, that your thoughts, like another language, you are now speaking English if you never spoke English in your own thoughts. If you never spoke Spanish and you live in a Spanish country, you are now becoming aware that you're speaking to yourself and your thoughts in Spanish. And it changes how you respond. When you mimic the English accent, People put on a pomp and aristocratic type of mannerism. Yes? They don't act like rappers when they speak British, but there are British rappers who act like fools. American rappers, so called, African rappers, so called. I'm not insulting their intelligence, 
There is no way that the conduct of what is known as hip hop and rap or rock and roll or pop music, all of this worldly, worldly, secular things, and secular is not a bad word, it is anti the kingdom. It is what it is. It's anti the father. And if you're rapping and conducting yourself with that mannerism, then that is anti the kingdom. You are in the world and you are of the world. Not to say that a rapper, a rocker, a pop star cannot hear the knock and know that they need to change and come to the Father and use their gift for the kingdom, not be used of Hasetan to enslave the world. For we know what the word says. Hell expands itself daily but not glory, not heaven as they know it. Why is that? Because the flesh enjoys being tantalized. And it's fun to be in the flesh, but it is joyful and peaceful and wonderful to be in the spirit of the Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. We were reading Ephesians chapter 6, and we came to verse 11, where we are cautioned and warned and unctioned to put on the entire armor of the Most High. This is our shield. This is our force field for within and without. How did the three Hebrew boys survive the fire of the oven? It was by the power of the Most High. That's all that matters. Not getting into technicalities. Who allowed them to survive? It was the Father. We have access to this power to survive anything, any temptation, any circumstance, anything that he allows us to, we can survive it. If he allows us to fall, he will lift us up. It is that simple. And we have to accept his will. Now, in verse 12, this, is addresses, this addresses everything that we are about. It's not about being saved. That was your invitation. Now you have the invitation. You have to be filled. And as you're filled with his spirit, you have to keep yourself, keep that authority that strengthens you against the wiles of the enemy by recognizing every single day, this is for real. Read verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers, of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is every day. You must remain consecrated. And though you do not sin, any flaws that you have not yet addressed, removed, or redirected, they will cause you to fall. You won't be able to wrestle against the principalities. You'll be too busy wrestling against yourself. And the enemy will have you. You will run the race, but you will not endure unto the end. We must go on to the journey unto the end as the prophet spoke it. There is a people who will fear and love and know that the Almighty is so and he will take us unto the end. But we must know that we wrestle not only against flesh and blood. We are at war. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Almighty that ye may be able, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all 
and having done all, and having done all to stand. There is no but, but, because, but, but, this. Well, it's because of that. You stay in that world of but because, how you feel, then you will not be able to journey to the end and stand. You don't have time, beloved. We don't have time. We were given this body. Yeshia was given this type of body. And he stood and stands. He lives and reigns. So what should we do? The word took on flesh to show us what to do. He sent his comforter to teach and guide us. He keeps the sovereignty of his word that he reveals nothing except he reveal it first through his prophets. That we do what? Stand in that day. And we cannot stand in that day if you are still wrapped up in yourself. You must take on the whole armor. Bear his spirit inside of you. That it permeates you. Is engrafted in you so that you transform by the renewing of your mind. That your body also will be strengthened and transformed for whatever is needed in that day. But you must do it. You must do your part. You must stop this now. You must live. But if you want to resist, you can. Come to Romans and then, Father willing, we shall pause very soon. We're going to read Romans 13. Hallelujah. I want you to read with power and conviction. This is to speak to your spirit. You do know you may speak and you should speak to yourself to allow the inner man to hear you. You speak to your body so your body can hear you. Please read verse 1 of chapter 13 of the book of Romans out loud. Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of the Most High. The powers that be are ordained of the Almighty. Now continue to read verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of the Most High. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. If you resist bearing all of the fruit of the Spirit of the Father, the Holy Spirit, then you are resisting the ordinance of the Most High. It is a mandate to convey, to express, and to abide in all of it. All the expressions, all the requirements of the fruit of the Spirit. This will not lead you to damnation if you do. But if you only choose to be long-suffering, but you do not choose to be patient 
for everything concerning spiritual things, not necessarily the natural things. And we've been taught about that, meaning if you choose to step out of a line and it does not hurt anyone and you can get it another time, that's not showing a lack of patience that is unfruitful or unbecoming or unrighteous. It is a lack of patience when you cannot be patient and forbearing another soul who needs your love and patience to give them time to be nurtured to come. You take away patience from a soul, then you can cause them to be lost. And this is what you cannot do. If you do such a thing, then you are not exemplifying the fruit of the Spirit. And therefore, you would be in disobedience of the ordinance of the Father that you would find yourself resisting because you have a because. Why you can't be patient for a soul. You can be patient for a foreign soul over there, but not the soul right in front of you. That's the nature of man. The people they know already, they're like, mm, second. The people they don't know, they want to impress, do everything they can to save their soul, cook them dinner, take them out. But the one who's hungry or needs a coat is right there in front of you, but you know them already. So it's like they're old news. I'm tired with you, done with you, through with you. I have to have somebody new in my sight. Is that who you are? No. Is that so? Is that who you were? The nature of the flesh is exactly like that. There are good people who are not saved that do not do things like that, but too many do. And you likely have done such a thing not even aware that you disregarded someone right in front of you to take care of a stranger more than your own. That's not right. And that's not the fruit of the Spirit. Now, would it be fair for you, anyone, and there are those who are listening and those in the midst, who may feel that the word is better understood when delivered through a minister with the organ and the drums and the choir playing and all the homiletics, that's a good message. They can hear the word and they get something from that kind of word. That's preaching. But if it's teaching and elevating and there's no music, no tambourine, no screaming and shouting, it's nothing but the word, service was it was good, but their body grew weary and they became bored because they were only hearing just to hear. They weren't listening unto the doing of the word, looking into the word for themselves. That's how you know. People just show up so they can say they came to church or came to service or heard the word or yes, they do. When really, no, they don't. The word has to be in a cookie cutter type of shape in order to touch them. But this should not be, but it is. Is it harder for one to hear the word through a softer voice or a stronger voice? If it's the word and it's taught in the truth of the word, should you be affected by how it feels to you or should you absorb the word? That sounds correct. But that's not what people do because of how they feel. If you preach the word and you speak the word and you come forth with power and your voice is too heavy or too loud, then they can't bear it. But you're not understanding. It's not for your natural, physical self. 
is to penetrate the layers of you to get to your spirit that does know there is a creator that is deafened by the layers of self and to get to self the one who's ministering ministers with power and might and you want to close the door because it doesn't sound like Tinkerbell. What will you do if you should even make it to the gates of glory, heaven, as many understand it, and the Father does not come to you dress the way you think he should look. His face is not pleasant to you the way God should look. The Father should look. The highest power. He's supposed to look like this. Not like that. Ooh, no. Run! Run! What is that? What will you do? Tell the Father to change who he is? We can't bear his presence. Are you going to acknowledge this and say, well, since we can't bear your presence, Father, will you just change into a flower so we can bear you? But he's still the creator. You're going to have to accept how the Father ministers to you the word of truth and how he allows himself to present his word to you. He is already benevolent, and that he does not allow you to see him in his physical appearance. He was already benevolent when the children of Israel saw the pillar of cloud and the fire when they were in the wilderness because they could not bear it. And they thought maybe they could. You don't get to dictate who the Father sends to reach you and pull you out of darkness into the light. You only get to say thank you. Please hear me. I am a student. I am a daughter. I am taught by the prophet. Everything that comes out of me by way of the Father was cultivated by the revelations, the revealings of the mysteries of the Father by way of his prophet. I would know nothing of anything if the Most High did not allow me to be born and predestined to be taught by his mind through the portal, which is his prophet. So when I teach, and when I preach, you're hearing of me, but I was shaped and formed by the Almighty by way of his prophet, the teachings of the prophet. So if you can hear my teaching, but you can't hear the teaching of the prophet, then something is wrong with you. You have to have it your way. You've got to come to the Father his way. And if he wants to use a hook to snare you and bring you in, if he wants to spear you with a spear gun to trap you to bring you in, if he allows you to go through whatever you have to go through, once you arrive, no complaining, but I wish you didn't use that sharp hook. I wish you didn't use that loud beacon. If only you had just come to me a little bit softer. That would have been better, okay? Next time, would you please just give it to me the way I want it? It's not you. It's the spirit in you that needs to be out of you so that you can take on and become who you're supposed to be in the Father. When you become saved, the invitation is for you to get rid of those things that you are so that you can take on the things that you are not. And when you do, you will be able to bear the kingdom. When you are able to bear the kingdom, 
it is because you're able to bear how he delivers the word of the kingdom to you. You just can't bear the almighty right now. But you will if you just settle yourself. Settle yourself. Stop criticizing. But it should be this way. It should be that way. I don't think that should have been done. I think this and I think that who are you? Who have you risen from the dead? Who have you taken out of the hands of Satan to live and not die? If you can bear my teachings and you can bear the evangelist teachings, the woman of power, the elders teaching, a righteous, prayerful woman, don't you know that they were all taught by the prophet of the Most High? Don't you want to be able to bear him as he comes forth to give you deliverance in the word? I do. I am. And I will forever. Whatever the Father wants, I will have it. I will take it. If I don't like it today, I will like it today. I will change my mind right early. If the Father says he doesn't want cream on the bodies of the righteous, and cream may be my favorite attire to wear, I will get rid of all the cream today. And I won't like it if the Father doesn't like it. This is how you must be if you truly want to live and be in his kingdom. You cannot say what you want. Say, I want to want what you want. I want to will what you will. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to bear the fruit of the Spirit all the way. Woo! Hallelujah! Oh, glory. Hallelujah! Yes! 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 It's for you too, Tanbethya! All the way! All the way! All the way! We journey unto the end! We stand with his prophet. We will not change. Woo! Oh, glory. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And when you're at war, you can't tell them to be gentle with it. They're not going to be gentle. We're about building up, being strengthened, accessing all that power that is in us by way of his spirit. We have the authority to reign over every authority that is under the Father. We have it. Adam had dominion over all things. One thing he could not do, he did. But he had that authority and he gave it up. He let it go. And the mercy of the Father was he gave him a body that you and I now have. But second man, Adam, came to redeem us and he had to go through. So who are we to tell the Father? I don't want that Roman soldier to whip me with that. I want feathers. I will go on the cross for you, but only if they don't use real nails. Just tape up the hands. No! If Yeshia had to bear what he did not, he did not want to bear, hear people yelling in his ear, mocking him, telling him, if you're the king of the Jews, then free yourself. Some king you are, he didn't want to hear any of that. But he knew what was coming, and he also sought with fasting, sought with supplication, did everything for the body, for the body. He had to do this. What is it that we won't do? He can do this for us, and we can't do it for him. We can't hear the word unless it's the way it's wrapped in a pretty package. We can't 
go through things. We want the Father to just escape us and not let us go through. That's not what happens. That's not how it is. And I know that people have lied to us. All of us have been lied to that we would escape, that he would never let anything bad happen. Oh, yes, he will. And it wasn't he, the father, that did this. It was our forefathers that did this. And it was Adam who did this. In order to get back, he gave us a way. And it is through Yeshaya. You follow Yeshaya in every way. Make yourself strong, not weak. Don't be frail. Frailty will kill you. And he will sift the righteous. And those who think they want to be saved won't even get to salvation because it will feel too uncomfortable. How uncomfortable they will be in hell. You make yourself strong, then things feel easier. You don't, they are far more difficult. We can do all things through Hamashiach. There is nothing impossible to the Father. And if we belong to him and we do, then what is impossible for us? We know he can and if he chooses to, he will. But if he doesn't, we are well with that. Amen. Let us pray. Glory. Hallelujah. Father, your word has gone forth by your will. Let everyone who has listened near and far not become complacent, but recognize the power of the truth. Your word lives. And it is the source and the strength through your spirit that will keep the righteous in the days that are soon to come. We are to have joy and prosperity and peace, but we shall also go through. And as we go through, Father, we will yet keep our joy, knowing that in the end we will rejoice. Let it so be done, Father. Prick everyone who's listening to make a change and do what they know is right. Get rid of worldly ways and connotations and flaws of character that is unbecoming and become sanctified and welcome and plead that you fill them with their spirit, that they can draw from you strength to overcome every situation they encounter. Let this thing be done according to your will, Father. Laka. Let us declare, so shall it be. As it is said, so it is received. So it is done. The word is born. Born is the word of Yah in me. Hallelujah. Let's bless him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beloved, we make it a habit to rehearse the word and to continue to listen. Be careful that while you're listening, you don't train your body not to hear. When you listen to the word, listen to the word. Don't become preoccupied and find yourself ignoring the word. There is a difference. When you're driving, you're listening. But if you're listening while you're conducting other things and you're not able to truly appreciate the word, be mindful of this that you don't train yourself not to hear. It will be very subtle. And before you know it, you'll be in the word, not really listening. A new teaching, you could be in the setting and your mind will be somewhere else. Keep training your mind to be attentive to the word. Each time you hear the messages from the Holy Prophet, you will hear things you never quite heard, though you heard it. 
Be attentive to the word. Give time to the word. So much time is given to other things. Now we go on. But stay before the Father. Do not think that you have arrived. Be very vigilant right here. Not just in natural things. To watch for attacks, for robberies, for theft, for people breaking in. For car accidents. Remember what the prophet said. Being vigilant is right here. Govern your thoughts by truth and transparency with a pure heart. Hallelujah. Let's bless him. I love you greatly. The holy prophet loves you. We appreciate you, family. You are a gift. You have to treasure yourself and each other there are not many who know what you know and believe what you believe and love who you love not many so let us rejoice in who we know hallelujah